We're here at 360 Atelier Studios on Melrose, and we're interviewing Lonnie Borello. And I'ma like your body slowly And do it like I owe you a favor Like I owe yeah. It's Mia Campbell from Pink Grasshopper, the fashion blog you love and know. We're here with Lonnie Burrell, yes, producer, singer, songwriter, amazingness, all right here in one package in a pop show. How, how awesome is that, right? So, <laughs> let's start off with the basics. So, you started off as a drummer. I did. Then you moved into background singing. Um, so where did songwriting and producing come in? When and where? Did that well, happen? it actually came in to play like in my teenage years, like the latter part, kind of like 16. Um, my little cousin Charlie, Charlie Burrell was a big producer now. Kenny Burrell, they had a production company called CKB, Hit Club Entertainment, which started back then and I've been with them all the way till now. But um. Kenny had a studio, and me and Charlie started grooming our gifts at the same time, him producing and me songwriting, singing, and we got some funny stuff if you go back and listen to it. But um, it started back then, and I, I just was like kind of in limbo of putting the drumsticks down and singing, because I was kind of doing both, but I didn't really think singing was too cool at the time. So I was like in limbo, just figuring out what I wanted to do. Right, so let's get this straight. You mentioned something about 16, 17 when you got into producing and things like that, but so you were background singing at a very young age with Casey and Jughead, is that correct? Well, or that, that show know? was about, I was 18. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was my first, but leading up into that, like I, I grew up a church kid, and so I was singing background for like the Clark Sisters and Donnie McClurkin, and I played drums for him actually, and I played drums for Tim Burrell, and just the, you know, the different gospel artists, John P. Key, I sang back when I was him. So I was a church kid who really was in the church industry that, you know, I, I got a little rebellious and branched up. Um, the way I got the Casey and Joseph thing was Craig was playing for them and he called me. I was actually in San Diego on the college. And um, he was like, Lonnie, Casey and Joseph was fired one of their background songs. All you gotta do is show up and audition, you'll have a job. I left school. Oh, wow. I never went back. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was actually red shirt um, for the basketball team. I was going to play for San Diego. And um, I'd say by the anyway. Because music was just what, what I really wanted to do. I drove back to LA and then I went back. Wow, very talented individual. Basketball, red shirt, and about to play for the champions of San Diego <laughs> <laughs> and all that stuff. Or what is the talent that you like to focus on now and really pursue and want to be known for? Um, I want to be known for giving my friends a great show live. Because that's not somewhere along the line, like, we lost that. Artists, they have their lips in there, you know, and it's not really giving, bringing the musicianship to their shows anymore. It's kind of watered down. You got the tracks playing and drowning out the band. Like, I really want to be able to, to be like those old classic artists. Back in the day, that really gave me a show. Prince still does it. Luke Evangelos did it. R. Kelly still does it. Tank does it. But, um, you know, we've, we've become extinct. So I want to bring that back. So, you name very, uh, you know, famous army singers, artists, or whatever, who were actually looked at as sex Where do you fit into all that? How do you want to be seen? Um, I like the sex symbol thing. At the same time, I like the guy next door thing. Um, I just want to be perceived as I want to be that guy that everybody thinks is so cool, but I'm making sure like whatever I'm doing, you can do too. Right. Right. So, so whether you think I'm sexy, whether you think <laughs> I'm funny, laid back, I just want to be that person that you want to be around. Um, you mentioned something about the R&B uh, genre being. What do you think about the state of the um, R&B genre right now? Um, I think at some point um, R&B got put in a box as urban AC, like it was for the older people. And then, you know, the younger 
R&B singers started doing mixing pop and hip hop and R&B to be cool because hip hop it took over. And it really did. And I think music just had this cycle. You got hip hop that it took, had, had this spike, and you got the neo soul, which when Joe Scott and Missy Soul Child, D'Angelo back in the day, they, it was a neo soul run. So I think it just it goes it goes around, and you got your pop going on. And I think it's coming back to R&B. So um, I think it's just time for you know the Chris Browns and the Trey Songz and, and, and Ryan Pharrell, you know, um, just the, uh, the young R&B singers to just go ahead and go on. You have a new album coming out. I do. What is it called? It's when called it The Love Train. Um, scheduled to come out fourth quarter, like October. What is the concept behind this Love Train? Um, the concept is behind the Love Train. Is just, you know, I always say if we just stick together, we hold each other's hands through the hard times, and respond to adversity with love, and just you know, everybody just stay loving. We can, we can just you know. Form this train that keep moving, make a love movement. You have a single out with Miss Kelly Rowland. She's on fire right now, so she you got her right at the good time. How did that work out? What's the concept with Favor as well? Well, Favor, well, the concept of Favor is, you know, when I sat down with Chris Brown and uh, Kevin McCall and Tiana Taylor, like, you know, what's, what's the best way to say I appreciate you? Well, let me do you a favor. So, let me do you like I owe you a favor. So that's the concept behind it, and, um, you know, when, when we wrote the song, we were, it wasn't scheduled to be my song, Chris's song, we didn't know what we were going to do, we were just in there making good music, and um, it turned out that Chris did music, you know, I called Kelly, just trying to figure out, like, the label, that, you know, the label was like, you want to get Kelly wrote, you think that could happen? I was like, can it happen? Like, yeah, her been cool for years, you know, so. Right. I called her and I said, sis, um, I got this song I need you to get on. It's going to be my first single. She said, well, Lonnie, I got to like it. I said, well, you know you've always liked what I do. What are you talking about? She said, well, send it to me. So I sent it to her. She called me back in five minutes and said, bro, I'll be in L.A. in two days. She got to L.A., came straight off the plane, straight to the studio, knocked it out. You've worked with a plethora of, you know, celebrities, well-known people, including Chris Brown, Tinka, Sammy Fox. What? Is let's say the best advice uh, one of the things it, it was it was Jamie. When I first started working with him I was younger, wet behind the ears, naive, thinking everybody likes Ronnie, <laughs> you know, everybody wants to see Ronnie you know? and so I had a problem with always wanting to share my good news with people and not understanding that, you know, everybody's not for you. Mm -hmm. So Jamie had to sit me down with me and say, Ronnie, just shut up. I talk to because everybody don't want to do out for you. Everybody wants to get what they can from you. But and then you got to look at the people that want to be where you are and so stop sharing so much with people because it's people that don't want to stop whatever it is you doing. Let's get into some fun now. Um, sure. <laughs> fun facts about Lonnie. Mm. When you were 17. I did not strip. <laughs> <laughs> I was 17. Oh, when I was 17, you know, you know what I remember the most? I, when I was 17, I played the drums for this church. My church that I played for visited another church, and the lead singer for the church I played for didn't show up. And so the pastor of the church I played for told he told uh, the choir director, "Well, we're gonna have Lonnie sing. Tell Lonnie I want him to sing." and let the, the drummer for this church play for our church. So they came to me and said, Lonnie, can I sing this and that? I said, no, I don't, that's not what he pays me for. I'm not, I'm going to play the drums. That's what I'm here to do. Because I didn't think singing was all the way cool yet. And so I ended up sticking to my word, playing the drums, and I got suspended for a whole month with no pay from that church at 17. Oh, wow. Yeah, because he wanted me to sing and I told him no. Who's your most? Memorable studio session. Beyonce. She is just she's amazing. Like she's goofy, she's bashful, she she's an alien vocally, she knows what she's doing and her vocal control and I'll never forget working with her. It was a song that I had wrote that she recorded and I sat, she wanted me to vocal produce her. So I would give her the part, like, be this how you gonna do it. I in my mind I'm like, wow, this is Beyonce, you know what I'm saying? 
finally got to work with her after being around her so much. So much. But I'll never forget, she just started singing and I just like, <laughs> and she, she stopped me. It was like Lonnie, like that. <laughs> Lonnie, like that. I was like, right. um, what do you want me to tell you? Because you are amazing. Like, yeah, right. So that's like I'll never forget that. Don't take no for an answer. You gotta work ethic is very important. And while you sleep, somebody's up trying to do the same thing you're trying to do. You gotta do your homework. You gotta pay attention to the slang that he changes. So you can't be corny. Um, don't try to be too clever for simple ones. And um, just, you know, pay attention to melodies and go back and listen to some of the old harmonies of the Jodices and the Brian McKnight and the R. Kelly. You gotta go back and do your homework and see what works and make that relevant. We just finished talking it up with Lonnie Burrell. We had an awesome conversation. Hopefully we'll see you on P Rock Hopper again. Well, on Twitter you can reach me and I'm always on it. It's Lonnie's World, L-O-N-N-Y-S underscore world, W-O-R-L-D. Um, my Facebook, I'm on that as well. I have a fan page and a personal page, which I run both of them. I'm hands on with my fans. Then we got LonnieBurrell.com, InClubEntertainment.com. We got NotifiedMusicGroup.com. You can keep up with me on all of those websites. Be sure to check him out, and you know where to find us because you're on it right now. But just as a reminder, it's MyPinkGrasshopper.com signing out with Lonnie Burrell.